Up first is our expert royal panel, uh, royal commentator Kinsey Schofield and Sky News contributor ladies, uh, Daisy Cousins. Ladies, welcome to the show. Now, Daisy, it's been reported this week that Megan missing from the coronation was a blow to fashion, was it? <laughs> Uh, look, I mean, there's no accounting for taste, of course, Caroline, but no, I I, I don't particularly uh, think that it was a blow to fashion, um, you know, for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, personally, I'm not actually that fond of Meghan's style. Um, and second of all, she might have uh, used it, in fact, to wear something fantastically inappropriate to make some sort of statement. I mean, when she was a working royal, for instance, that's what she used to do. Uh, one of the late Queen's rules was always that the ladies had to wear pantyhose. She wouldn't do it because she didn't want to. Another rule was that the royals were not supposed to wear black to daytime functions because it was too somber. There's photo after photo after photo of Meghan Markle while she was a working royal. In fact, wearing black to these kind of events where she shouldn't. So, um, look, and also, as, as we know, when she's not uh, copying Princess Diana, she's doing stuff like going hiking in casual leggings and jeans while also wearing £157,000 worth of jewellery, including Princess Diana's £17,000 Cartier watch. So, God bless Meghan Markle, but when it comes to fashion, no, I don't really think that was a loss for the coronation at all. Tell us how you really feel, Daisy. <laughs> now, Kinsey, it's also been posited this week that the breakdown in relationship between the Sussexes and the royal family has been a squandered opportunity insofar as US and UK relations are concerned. Do you think that that's the case? I think you're giving Harry and Meghan too much credit with with a story like that. You know, um, I think Katy Perry and Lionel Richie are much better representatives and much better uh, people to to manage UK US relations. Um, they have worked harder for Prince King Charles's charities now than Harry and Meghan actually did representing the monarchy. And you know, I'd say that they. I, I think that. We, I would look at Joe Biden's absence way more than I would look at Harry and Meghan's in regards to US-UK relations. So I'm sure they love headlines like this, but I really don't think that that's the, the reality. And Kinsey, I'll stick with you. It doesn't seem like the relationship is likely to improve anytime soon. Uh, we understand Prince William is still pretty hurt about the breakdown in the relationship, isn't he? You're absolutely right. I mean, um, it was the Daily Beast that reported the words hate, Prince William hating not only uh, Prince Harry, but Meghan Markle. And you saw as you watched the coronation how carefully choreographed everything was from entrances to exits. You know, palace staff wanted to make sure that there were no run-ins, no, no, not even any possibility for eye contact, even though I did catch, you know, sweet Princess Charlotte look back a couple of times to try to see if Prince Harry was there. Uh, but you did see that palace staff went out of their way to carry, carefully choreograph there being no instances, no run-ins, and no really, uh, like, picture opportunities for William and, and Harry. And, and I think it's devastatingly sad. And Daisy, uh, it really is sad, but mm. do you see any way back for the, the brothers, at the very least, the brothers at this point? Look, I, I reckon that time is the great healer of all wounds. And, and the thing is, obviously, uh, Prince William is very, very hurt and rightfully so. Harry is being extremely spiteful, as we know. But we must remember that all of this family drama has only taken place really in the last kind of three or four years, which is it's a very, very short amount of time in the space of a lifetime. Plenty of families go through these sort of, you know, short to medium term family rifts. I reckon, give it time, maybe give it five, another five years, another 10 years, I do think that those bonds between them are extremely strong. They had that terrible shared trauma of their loss of their, their mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. I think there has to be a way back because at the end of the day, family is, if, if family is family, those brothers have been through a lot. I think give it time. I'm an eternal optimist on this one. So, Daisy, just staying with that, look, there's already been rumblings about whether Harry would be invited to William's coronation. Now, look, it's way too early to tell. Um, given the current state of things, obviously that would be difficult, but like, like you've just said, anything's possible in the future, isn't it? 
Well, it really, really is. And and you know what, Caroline, I think even, say, hypothetically, um, you know, I reckon in so 20, 30 years from now, remember, King Charles does have excellent genes for longevity. He might, in all honesty, live till he's 100. Even if 30 years down the track, uh, William and Harry still really don't like each other, William is so classy and so courteous and has such a great sense of duty and tradition. I reckon he would still invite Prince Harry, even if he didn't want to, because that is the right, polite thing to do. So either way, I do think Prince Harry is getting an invite. I do appreciate your optimism, Daisy. <laughs> I really do. And Kinsey, on to Princess Kate. And look, she's one of the best at communicating and engaging it with the public, in my view. Uh, the video showing the behind-the-scenes footage of the coronation was excellent. Here's a short clip. King, country, Kinsey, how much influence do you think that she will have in branding the royal family going forward? Look, I think this type of content is essential. You know that recently the Prince and Princess of Wales were criticized for not doing enough for the monarchy. I think the social media content is another way and an easier way for them to reach their audience on a regular basis. We know that Catherine is very visual, a photographer. Um, and, you know, Megan in on Tuesday is accepting some feminism award. They're up against a never-ending PR machine here in the States with the Sussexes. This type of content is easy to drop. It's visually stimulating. And it's one up on Harry and Megan because they are royal and it shows them how great they are at their job and how committed they are to, the, to their duties. So this is an excellent opportunity for Catherine, the Princess of Wales, to really step up and show the world who she is and, and to really shine a light on her voice and what her uh, objectives are as the Princess of Wales and future Queen Consort. And Daisy, just off what Kinsey was saying there, and I, I, I really agree with her, Kate is just very good at reading the room, isn't she? She really is. She has such a wonderful sense of the people because, as we know, she, she is a woman of the people. She doesn't come from a royal background. You know, she fell in love with Prince William at college and, unlike Meghan Markle, was so, so keen and determined to do her duty and to assimilate very well into that family. Fast forward to 2023 and look at this wonderful work she's doing. And she's so clever, Carolyn, because she would know, as Prince William would know, that they absolutely must must be able to connect with Generation Z, with the under 30s and the under 25s, because as the whole royal family is aware of, the monarchy exists very much amongst other things at the, at the behest of public opinion. And if they are not uh, positively influencing a new generation to uh, feel that they're relevant and important and a positive uh, light in the UK and in the Commonwealth, well, they're going to have trouble existing into the future. So I think Catherine, Princess of Wales, is, is just the perfect person uh, to be leading this push and I commend her for the, for the fabulous work she's doing so far.